Today we're gonna make bacon rib whiskey glaze 1.0. Evan came up with this. We were talking about how we can improve our already very, very good bacon rib. Uh, and a couple of the cooks were throwing out the idea. You know, we've got an abundance of still whiskey. The idea of a glaze came around and Evan made this. It says 1.0. This recipe is delicious. It's very good. I think it's gonna live at 1.0. So what we're gonna do, I got, a, I got a pan over here. We're gonna go in with some rendered lard and melt. There we go. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm gonna let that melt and do its thing. As Matthew was saying, this is a really interesting whiskey glaze. And I think the most important thing about it is that, you know, we cook with fire outside all the time. And now we're doing kind of the most indoor classic way of cooking with fire. We're doing the flambe. So we're going to melt down this lard. We're gonna caramelize some of our aromatics and develop some flavor in that way. Then we're gonna go in with the whiskey, a full bottle, and it's gonna like, it's gonna light up. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be hot. Uh, but here's the safety part. We have a lid around so we can just boom, clamp it on there and then it'll stop. And then it will reduce and then we'll go in with the rest of our stuff to kind of fill out the sauce. We have a pork demi-glace, we have some brown sugar, we have a mixture of sambal cider vinegar and Worcestershire sauce, and then we're just gonna season it with salt. In go the scallions and some garlic. We're just gonna let these cook and cook down a little bit until they get some color and until they develop some flavor. So we came to the realization that the bacon rib, even though it is very good, was kind of one dimensional on the glaze because it was just maple syrup. It was almost cloying. It was really sweet and it really wasn't anything else. So we wanted to keep it sweet, but add a lot of depth of flavor. And this uh, specific cask strength has a lot of depth of flavor. It has a lot of deep tones and kind of spicy notes to it. Just goes along with everything else that we're putting in there. Brown sugar, the pork demi-glace really kind of brings everything home. We're starting to get some caramelization on these guys. The edges are starting to brown. Things are starting to soften and turn translucent. You can see we're building up a little bit of fond on the bottom. That is going to be great when we flambe and deglaze with all of our liquids. That is all gonna come off the bottom of the pan and go into our sauce. Smells very good. Smells really forky. So it's deglazing right now. All that bourbon is going to scrape all the good bits up off the bottom of the pan. Soon as this starts to boil and evaporate, that's gonna light up like a firework. That'll all come off. Oh, whoa! You flambe to burn off more alcohol. Like you can do it this way, but it's like a controlled way to burn off more of it, like a little quicker, because it'll get hot uh, and it'll boil faster and more of it will burn off. You just want to do it in a controlled way. So we flambe a little bit and now we're just reducing. So we want to cook off as much of that alcohol as we possibly can because we don't want it to taste like cast strength bourbon. Uh, but we just want the deep, rich, flavorful notes in the sauce. Base in there on the vegetables. I mean, it smells like pure. It smells like a distillery. It smells like I'm just getting Christmas like Eve. of just <laughs> straight grain alcohol. Like at least where I'm standing. But yeah, reduce it like this for a while. Let the alcohol come off. Then we're gonna add the rest of the flavors. To it. So we're gonna add in the brown sugar, whole bunch of it. I'm gonna kind of let that melt down and it's gonna get, you can see it's starting to get a little syrupy. But that was the point of this whole sauce, is just adding complexity, adding different flavors. See, before it was just sweet. Now we've added richness from the whiskey, aromatics from the garlic, meat flavors that echo the bacon and pork in the form of lard and this pork demi-glace. And then this stuff is the sambal vinegar and Worcestershire, and it just kind of like heightens all of the acidic, Spicy. It's a spicy meatball. That's sambal, Worcestershire sauce, and cider vinegar. Now we're gonna go in with this guy. Give it a juice, let that come together. 
You can smell Worcestershire, you can smell the Sambal, you can smell that acidity coming from the apple cider vinegar. It's gonna be a big flavoring agent and balancer. Our port jello. This is stock made from our peaceful pork bones that we obviously butcher in house. Break our hogs down every Tuesday. That's the stock right there. And then what we'll do is when we strain that, we'll use it to make our hash and whatever is left over from making our hash, we will reduce all the way down basically by about 80% just concentrated pork, gelatin, collagen. That is going to help thicken. Essentially what we did is we took our pork stock and we cooked all of, like, not all, but most of the water out of it. That's leaving all of that collagen and that gelatin that was extracted from those pork bones and allowing that to be the thickener and another flavoring agent, adding some more of that depth and complexity to our overall finished glaze. What, what holds it together is that, is that gelatin and gives it that stickiness. Same stuff that's in the barbacoa, just like gives it that like. The emmy gloss is gonna melt as it comes at, back up to a bowl and we're just gonna let it reduce probably to about by half. We're gonna taste it, adjust the salt as needed. The acidity has, you know, it's been pretty good. And tweak it if we need, but I don't think we're gonna have to do that. And then we'll cool it and we'll see the, the finished product tomorrow and Saturday at the truck. So this has come to a full rolling boil. And what we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna reduce this by about half. And the thing that I'm looking for is, you know, how far up the side of the pan is it? But I'm also looking for the rate at which the bubbles on the top are popping. That is an indicator of the viscosity and it'll be that sign that when they go from being frequent and small to slower and large, kind of, as you can see around the edge of the pan, when those are like that in the middle, I'll know that it's reduced to the proper consistency and then I'll pull it off the heat and we'll get it finalized and ready to go to the truck. Now we're gonna let it go like this. Um, as it reduces also, I'm probably gonna lower the heat a little bit, A, so it doesn't boil over and B, so that way we can ensure that we don't burn the bottom of it uh, because there's a lot of sugar in it and we wanna avoid that from happening. So we can actually see that those bubbles are slowing down in the middle, we're becoming larger and less frequent. Um, so we're getting, we're getting pretty close and another way that you can tell is, usually you take the back of a spoon, but I've got the back of a spatula, right? You run your finger across it, see how you're not getting, it's not bleeding into each other. It's got the viscosity to stand alone. So I'm gonna call this done. Turn the heat off. We're gonna season it with some salt. It's an important thing to note too, that the viscosity is gonna change. It is hot right now, so it's gonna be a little bit thinner. As it cools, it's gonna thicken and it's gonna have more of the consistency of the maple syrup that we were, we were using. So we, in a sense, made our own maple syrup, which has added a whole bunch of extra flavor to it. Yeah. It also didn't come from a tree. So, it's nothing but good. Syrup. It's so good. Complexity, richness, like depth of flavor, the thickiness from both the sugar and the ge gelatin from the demi gloss. So good. To balance something like this that has a lot of flavor, you need a lot of salt in there. Something that is tangy, that's spicy, that's really sweet, that's really rich. I think that's perfect. It's perfect. Right. Chef says it's perfect. Lights up in your mouth when every when all of it just goes bing. So we're gonna put it in this thing, which we're not gonna strain out the scallions and garlic now. We're gonna kind of let them steep and continue to soak flavor into the sauce. But when we heat it up in the warmer tomorrow, when the bacon ribs go on, we're gonna strain it out. Then we're gonna pour on the cooked bacon ribs this glaze. Then they're going to rest in this glaze overnight. Then Saturday morning, we're going to open up the packages and eat it. Really happy with how this glaze came out, even just the first try. I, I mean, I always think there's room for improvement in anything, but still whiskey. We love partnering with them on dishes like this. We're about locality, all this stuff right over here, peaceful pork, all that stuff right over there peaceful pork. We're all about supporting local businesses, so it's an honor and a pleasure to work with them and to feature them on one of our most popular items.
We're here at Leroy and Lewis. We're gonna go ahead and pull off a couple of these bacon ribs that are ready. Not all of them are ready. We pull them off as they are. And right now they've been on since 320, so about four hours or so. And we're gonna check them out right now. Yeah, these are looking really good right now. Wow, this one is perfect right here. Right here. So we're actually not really looking for a temperature. We're looking for this nice, beautiful color right here. This bone, it wasn't, it didn't go on like this. So it, as it cooks, that meat kind of pulls and it gives it this beautiful exposed bone right here. And we want it to be probe tender all the way through in every single spot, which is exactly what I have right here. Yeah, this is that new whiskey bacon rib glaze that Evan just came up with. And so what I like to do is I'll put some on the, on the foil first, try to give it a nice, even, coating on it right here place that beautiful bacon rib right on top and then glaze the top give it a nice tight wrap want to try to keep all of this glaze in here if possible well i'll give it one fold over i'll hit the sides left side right side make sure that this bone doesn't poke through the foil because then it's going to leak all of that good glaze give it a nice tight wrap And of course, poked it, but that's what we got more foil for. That's it. On to the mountain of beef ribs. Today's Friday night. That's going to be ready for service tomorrow, Saturday morning. Saturday. We're on the truck. Saturday, bacon rib day. We made the glaze with Matthew on Thursday. Full bottle of cask strength. We wrapped up and cooked the ribs yesterday with the glaze. They've been holding in the warmer all night. So now we're about to open up this package. It's like Christmas morning every single time and we're gonna eat a bacon rib. Yes, oh my God. Look at how good that looks. It's been just been sitting with that glaze on it. That looks so damn good. Boom, goes the dynamite. That's, that's what we call chef snack right there. And then this is what, this is what gets everybody in line very excited. It's just a little drip drip when you come through dripping. We didn't want to change the preparation of it too much. We like how glazy and how kind of syrupy it is, but we wanted just something that had more dimension than just maple syrup. So it looks the same, but the flavor is like 10X. Right in the middle, big presentation piece, bacon rib. We've got our chori papas over here. Best new side, favorite new side. A couple sausage links, one hop sausage, one beef and spicy garlic. Of course, Martin's potato bread, anything else will be disrespectful. Cheesy cauliflower, a couple beautiful slices of lean brisket, and then a pickle medley. Just goes to show you that there's always room for improvement, always trying to just get a little bit better, that much better. The thing that people already were obsessed over and loved and has been all over Netflix, the bacon rib, the thing that people are literally lined up here for hours, hours at a time. We wanted to make it even better than it was. So we took this glaze with still whiskey, mixed it with a bunch of other flavors, kind of really brightened everything up. And then now this bacon rib is even better than it was before. I don't know how we did it, but we did it with the help of our friends. It's still Austin. Awesome.